Falco 0285 speed sensor front right. That's the first Porsche test completed. Hello, welcome back to the Double Duck Garage. I'm looking at my Porsche Cayenne 2006. This is the 955 model with the 9PA engine. I've got uh, diagnostic trouble codes indicating an issue with the right front wheel sensor. And um, I'm learning stuff as I go. Um, you know, proving or disproving some of my assumptions, proving that uh, I most definitely do not know everything I'm doing. Most definitely I am an amateur and uh, most definitely I am uh, going to learn an awful lot over the next few weeks whilst I try and sort this out. Guys, so noisy and windy out here. <laughs> Firstly, thank you very much to everybody who's commented on the first video, especially Opal Manta Mechanic, he's somebody that I know and he is actually a professional mechanic. He has suggested that I bypass the wiring from the sensor to the PSN module and uh, obviously if the problem goes away then it's um, to do with the loom, if the problem stays then it's to do with the uh, PSN module itself or the pickup at the other end. Um, secondly, he's explained to me how that pickup works and it's not as I totally incorrectly assumed a reluctor ring with a sensor is actually a magnetic ring in the wheel bearing and uh, the sensor picks up the change in um, the uh, magnetic field so if the magnetic field in that ring has got damaged that would be the reason why I've got this uh, erratic signal coming out. He also suggested checking the sensor for signs of contact with the bearing. Until now, I was unaware that you could get this magnetic ring in the bearing. I was also unaware of this that allows you to see the magnetic field. So I've ordered one of these as well. I found a PDF with some instructions for performing tests. So I'm going to run through that first. So Falco 0285, speed sensor front right. The PSM module control unit plug, pin 34 is the signal lead, pin 33 is the ground. The PSM control unit supplies 7 milliamps of current via the signal lead to the active speed sensor when ignition is on and during driving. To test it, switch the ignition off, disconnect the plug on the speed sensor, connect the disconnected plug to pin 2 on the control unit and speed sensor using a jumper. Connect a digital multimeter to the open signal lead on the disconnected plug pin 1 and switch the measuring range to milliamp. Switch on the ignition and read off the value. So to get started I need to identify which pin on the sensor connector is which and uh, firstly I'm going to look for the earth so I found a good earth here in the engine bay and now I'm going to have a look and see which pin it is. Okay that's nice and easy that one is the earth. That one must go off to pin 33 on the PSM module. Uh, therefore, by process of elimination, the other one goes to pin 34. That's the signal lead, and that's the one I'm looking for. That should give me, when the ignition is on, should give me seven milliamp current. I spent 20 minutes in the garage, and I now have two test leads. The, the signal from the PSM module comes down here and into the yellow lead, um, obviously back probed. That's coming down here into the meter, out of the other side of the meter up to the sensor and then out the other side of the sensor back to the connector and off to the earth. So I'm uh, set up on milliamps and I'm going to turn the ignition on and in theory I should see 7 milliamps so uh, fingers crossed. That's the first Porsche test completed. That's proved that we're getting seven milliamps as near as damage down to the sensor from the PSM module. I also know that I've got a good earth from the sensor. Gonna head back to the garage, have a quick look at the PDF with the troubleshooting instructions, find out what it says about that result, which is obviously looking fine, and uh, find out what the next step is. Okay, so I know I'm getting seven milliamps, prove that with a multimeter. So um, step number two, is replace the front right speed sensor. That's been done already. Uh, if the fault is not remedied by replacing the speed sensor, the wheel bearing with multiple pole ring must be replaced. End. 
The challenge I've got now is to get into there and run two wires directly from the back of the PSM module down to the sensor. Um, not 100% certain if I'm going to be able to do it, but um, I think first thing to do, disconnect the battery so that I can get in there, pull things around, disconnect things and have a good look. This isn't going to happen. I've really done a bit of damage. I don't want to do any more. I've tried it with the connector on the PSM module and off. Uh, I can't get it to shift. There's at least one clip on each side and this one on the top that I've already cracked. So um, I think I need to do the sensible thing, leave it alone for the time being. It seems an almost 100% certainty that I'm going to be changing that bearing. Opal Manta Mechanics seems to think that's going to be the problem and the PDF tends to back that up. Um, I am, however, quite interested in just indulging myself for a couple of hours and just taking some traces with the new Pico scope. Right, it's one of these frustrating afternoons where every time I come out here it starts raining. But what I'm trying to do, and hopefully it will happen before it chucks it down again, is get a trace on the Pico scope of what's going on at the centre. What I have here is the Pico scope connected to my laptop. We have the earth of the sensors connected to a ground. This goes up to that uh, earth point in the engine bay. And then I'm back pinned into the sensor connector. The ignition is on, the car is in neutral. I am just going to boot up the picoscope, spin the wheel and capture the traces. The red line is the signal from the PSM module and the blue line is the ground back to the PSM module. Right, hopefully that's done it. Um, gonna disconnect all this, nip back into the garage and have a look at the results. Well, we can see that uh, we get a number of peaks as the wheel's turning, and it looks like the maximum output from the sensor is somewhere around about 0.5 volts peak to peak. Every so often, one of these peaks gets cut off and uh, we just see this flat spot. As I'm turning the wheel, I obviously need to take my hands off it briefly. I would expect the wheel to slow down a little bit, but I'd expect it to slow down sort of progressively, whereas I actually seem to be seeing a dip in the speed. I'm really just experimenting here and trying to get used to the picoscope, but if I've got this right, it's very interesting to see that the dip in the oscilloscope trace seems to correspond with the dip in the Autel trace that I took when I was making the last video. Because of those possible inconsistencies, I stress possible, uh, this is all completely new to me. Uh, I think I need a known good trace for comparison. So what I'm going to do is uh, take a trace from the front left that uh, I know is not causing a problem. There's no codes or anything reported on that one. And uh, just do a comparison. couldn't get any sort of signal out of this near side sensor yet I know it works. I figured I'd best take the wheel off again and just check all my connections. Everything was okay but the reason why I can't get a reading looks like my um, battery is really quite low 9.8 volts is well below what it needs to be. So I've pretty much run out of time on this now. Um, we've obviously got traces from the front offside and I've got the original Autel sc scan trace as well. Uh, they really do both point to the wheel bearing. Opal Manta Mechanics points to the wheel bearing, the PDF points to the wheel bearing. So um, yeah, if it walks like a double duck, it quacks like a double duck, it probably is a double duck. So that being the case, Next step, decide whether I'm going to do this myself or whether just for once I'm going to pay somebody else to do this. This project's been dragging on for a long time because I've just got so many calls on my time at the moment that I've really struggled to get to it. So I might just actually, just for once, um, pay somebody else to have a look at it, confirm the diagnosis and repair it. Uh, one way or another, I will do a follow-up video to this and I will let you know exactly what happened, whether the diagnosis was correct, whether it wasn't, and and uh, hopefully tell you what the fix is as well, which I think, let's face it, we know is going to be the wheel bearing, but uh, obviously confirmation will be good. So uh, that's it for the time being. I'll be back as soon as possible with a uh, final video and uh, 
for the time being. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon.